mechanics we're mainly focusing on today are the lateral or counter rotation movements we're going to do to isolate the knee, isolate the foot, and make him not be able to turn. That's what I want. Because if I just rip it across, Giles is just going to turn with it and has just freed his knee out of my knee line, and he's gone, right? So I need to compensate with quickness, and that's what's going to hurt him. Right? So, the first thing we're going to start with is just the grip. So, I'm perpendicular to his shin. I have a shotgun grip. Shotgun grip, you know? Right? The elbow is a little bit above the foot. And it's just going to cross grip onto the heel. Sometimes you can't get it. That's when you go for the Achilles tendon. But most of the time, you can just get it fine. It's no big. Right? I need to pull this up towards me and I need to pinch my elbow back towards my own rib cage. This puts his foot in dorsiflexion. Dorsiflexion is a flat foot position. We want to have that for the heel hook. We don't want to have plantar flexion, which would be the ballerina toe position or ballerina foot position. That's good for him, that's bad for me. Reason B is if I put his foot up, it locks everything in place and I can rotate through the fibula and tibia better to attack the knee. If we are here, the foot joint, the ankle is, is doing uh, shock absorbing motions, which then lead to not a good break in the knee, which I want to prevent. Furthermore, if he wants to slip the heel, heel slipping is a real problem, okay? Especially against good people. Heel slipping works because he's pointing his toes and pulling his knee towards the outside and putting the heel in. If you roll with good people that know how to leg lock, this happens all the time. And this is only possible if he can go into the plantar flexion. That's why I want to prevent that. Now prevent that by pinching my elbow towards my own rib. My wrist is on his Achilles tendon. This is the position I want to have. So my armpit, or rather the inside of my arm, is under his foot, right at the base of the joint. The wrist needs to be at the ankle. I can't be here. Slipping is really, really easy here, and they're gonna slip out all the time. I don't want that. So I have my shotgun grip. I'm gonna grip across. I pull the heel up, bring my chest forward, and pinch my elbow towards my own rib cage, and bring my elbow back as far as I need to, to be able to come with the wrist onto the Achilles tendon. If I mess this up, I need to bring the elbow back. And keep it pitched. Now here we have different gripping options. The first and for the beginning the most important is just the gable grip. Keep in mind that the hand that has the heel is pointing towards me with its butt. I don't want to be here. I don't have nearly as much pressure. Okay, people used to say that it doesn't really matter. It matters a lot with good people. Okay, so you want to be here and you want to get a thumbless grip. A gable grip is a thumbless grip. Don't do this, okay? Just thumbs towards the hands, just grab. And I want you to be able to create this, right? Some of you will not pull up the heel enough and stuff like that happens. So I'm not really under the foot, I'm above the foot. That can't happen. So I need to pull this up, bring this back, and that's the position I wanna have. And then I'm just gonna connect my hands with the gable grip, I'm heel hooking. Don't forget that, that's important. Okay, and just setting up the grip. If you can do that, we don't need to do it a lot. It's just to get the initial motion, because if you mess this up, everything else will be bad. Okay, so we're just gonna start with that. Any questions regarding that? Okay, grab a partner, go. Any questions so far? Yeah. Really physical. Depending on the on the foot, I tried the, the, the two foots. Mm -hmm. One was really easy to to set up and uh, and to this one, this one, this one, to to twist. Mm -hmm. But the other one was only the, the the keeping the setup was really hard. 
Mm -hmm. So, I don't so know. maybe you just have a strong side where you can just move better. Okay. That could be okay. it. Um, or maybe your partner is unconsciously resisting one side more than the other. Mm. That could be it also. But if your partner is relaxed and moving with it a little bit, then it shouldn't be a problem. Okay. And when we're in the position with the stuff we're going to do next, it's really easy because you push with your chest and you, you use big muscles to expose it. And I forgot this. The yeah, the exactly. Pinch. I just pinch like this. I pinch, I bring my chest. It's not the same as this. Exactly, yes. exactly. So some of you did the following. I should have explained that better. This is an outside heel. I'm looking at the outside of the leg. Some of you did this. This is an inside heel. You're looking on the inside of the leg. This is more effective but that was not what we were going to do. However, the technique is the same. Okay, so if you didn't do it correctly, it's no big deal because it's more or less it's the same thing. But the pinch feels a little bit different because the foot is aligned differently, right? So again, some of you didn't use enough regulated tension. Regulated tension means the pressure I make with my body to get certain things done, right? You don't want to do too much to burn out, but you don't want to do too little so it doesn't work. You don't want that, right? So when we're here and I do it, he's not resisting if he feels pressure in the knee or the foot. He's just moving with it a little bit. He doesn't need to stay where he is, right? So you really want to pull this up. If you don't pull this up correctly, you're going to end up here. And that's not what I want. We, want, we don't want to be on top of the foot. We really want to have the foot pinched like this with my armpit or the outside of the arm here and not on top of the foot and that happens because you're not pulling up too, too much okay you you just need to pull up a little more bring your chest forward and pinch the elbow back and now i have my position and the first hand i set it's the thumb who's he looking me okay so this is the position the hand needs to be and i just connect this one just comes over Right, and I hold everything tight. And that's it. And see, especially when you start out with these positions, that's not super, super complicated, but you need to get a feel for it. And if you do mistakes here, it's never going to work when you're in the position and someone's gonna resist. That's why we do, the, do these things in, in small steps. It makes everything easier, okay? But if that's okay, you can, you can do that a couple more times. If that's okay, we're gonna start in Ashi, okay? So what we're gonna do is get our feet in between my partner's feet. Stretch one foot, scoot towards his hip, put the hook here, foot on the hip, and bring the inside of the knee onto my ankle. That's the position. Try to not mess that up if you don't know the position. Try to get that good, because otherwise, this will be harder. If the position of the legs is not correctly and you don't have any pressure and you can just move with it, he can absorb a lot of the pressure I put into it. And I don't want that, right? So keep the position correctly, that's important. And now we're gonna do the same thing. We're here, we're gonna cross grip, we're gonna pull up, and now the chest becomes more important. I really need to put my chest over my arm and just rotate on my elbow or bring my elbow back. It's a little up to you. I tend to prefer just rotating on the elbow, but if that's hard for you, just bring the elbow back. But do it slowly, because if you do it correctly, there's already a lot of pressure. That's one way to get the heel, to get heel exposure. There are many others, but that's a really good way to start to get basic mechanics done. So after that, when we got the heel, we don't want to really put breaking pressure. We just want to get the position correct. So when we're here, my legs are aligned correctly, the foot is up, I get the heel. I pull this up towards me, I bring my chest forward and I pinch the elbow. And I'm on my elbow, not on my shoulder. That's really important. Now I connect my grip and I look at my grip and see if my wrist is onto the tendon or if my forearm is it. Then I need to adjust, get into position and be here onto the elbow, this doesn't change. I have a little bit regulated tension in my legs. 
right? And only if I have a perfect position, I start to helix. We're starting in this position because it's the weakest. And I can practice the breaking mechanics we're going to do after better because the position allows to have more slack for him. So I can go deeper into the breaking mechanics without hurting him. Because if I do everything correctly, he will tap soon and I can't really practice a lot. That's why we are going to separate certain things regarding the mechanics as well. So again, if you don't know the position, feet to the inside, straighten one leg, scoot in. On the far hip, on the near hip. My knee, or the inside of my knee, is over my ankle. I get my shotgun grip just like before, nothing changed. I reach in, I grab the heel. I pull the heel up and I bring my chest forward and pinch my elbow. And from here, I look at my wrist, okay, the position is correct, thumb is towards me, then I'm just gonna connect my hands. And that's my position. Don't fall onto the shoulder. If you fall onto the shoulder, something happens that you don't want. You bring his foot forward and you lose pressure. There's some exceptions to this, but generally speaking, you want to be on your elbow and not on your shoulder. <clears throat> okay? So we're here. Pull this up. If your partner feels pressure, he can adjust the hip angle a little bit. So if I pull this up, he can just scoot his, lip, his hip a little to relieve some pressure if he needs to. Right? And I'm just gonna bring my chest over, pinch my elbow towards my rib cage have it far enough back that his tendon is on my wrist. I'm heel hooking, all right. Connect the hands, stay on the elbow, and this is my position. If you can achieve this, you will be successful later on. If you can't make that work, everything else will tend to not work, especially against people who are good with this. Does that make sense for you guys? Okay, try it out, go. If you don't feel any pressure, that's no problem because it's not the mechanics. It's just how to get into position to now do the mechanics. And because it's not easy and people mess it up all the time, we need to train that in isolation so you get into a position. It's a little bit like if you don't get into an arm lock, you can't break it, right? And because the positions that we do these things out of are mainly control positions. Those are not submissions per se. It's a position that leads to a submission, just like a side control, right? And we need to have a good positioning to be able to submit from there. And now we're just entering into the submission and we're gonna do the mechanics right after. The heel hook is the most economic joint lock we have because there's not that much muscular um, possibilities for him to work against it. Unless an arm lock where people just can bicep curl yourself into. Unless a Kimura where people just rip the arm up. And that's a lot harder with heel hooks. So especially when you're a little smaller and tend to be weaker than your opposition, this is great because it doesn't take much effort. And that's one of the reasons why we have mechanics that are divided into three steps. And if you do it everything correctly and your partner is not super, super mobile, you can tap your partner with every one step of those. And at the end, you're gonna do them all at the same time. And the break will be really, really easy because it's such an economic submission and it's such a strong position and you have so, uh, so, such a good lever on the leg. So, when we're here, and I do everything correctly, I pull this up, don't forget that, that's the first thing you do, you pull this up, now you bring your chest forward and you pinch. That's not easy, it looks easy, but it takes a lot of feel to feel how the foot needs to be positioned, right? The first mechanic we're gonna do is a counter rotation of the heel and the knee. We're not gonna rip this across. We're just gonna shrug our shoulders and pull the heel as much as possible towards my own loose. Like I wanna drink out of a straw. The second part, 
the counter rotation part, is putting the knee down, right? So my knee is pushing his knee out and my arms are pulling his heel up, hence the counter rotation. If I do that correctly and we are here, I can even from that sometimes get a tap. If I can't get a tap and I do everything correctly, then that's not an issue because it's just the first part of the mechanic. You have some people that are just mobile, right? Some people will tap really, really quickly. So first part is a good position, a good bite on the heel. Then I pull the, the heel up towards my nose and point this knee down. And I have the first part of my braking mechanics. If you get a tap, cool. If not, that's not a big deal. The second part is without bringing my nose and my hand apart from each other, bringing this shoulder back. So the second part we do is we pull this back up with me and I'm just gonna look over my shoulder. That's the second part and see I did, a, did get a tap there. Right, first part, counter rotation. Second part is the upper body. And the last part is the hip. The hip is the strongest of the mechanics I'm showing, the strongest part by far, but it's the one that you should use at the end. Because everything, it, there will bleed, the pressure will bleed out of the lock a lot if you just bring your hip in and you don't have this here set up properly. And sometimes you even give him the slip when you do that, right? So you need to be tight here and that's what controls him. And the hip, is the last thing you do. And the hip is uh, gross motor motion. If you can't control it, you need to go really, really slow because if you just pop in, just like an armbar, you can hurt him. So I can control him here all day if, I, if I, I'm able to do that, right? If I have the proficiency in the position. Without him being able to escape, unless he knows what to do, and I can safely practice everything. I don't need to rip anything. So we have three modes in training. The first one is get a heel and let go. The second one is grab a heel and keep it. And the third one is applying pressure. But you can train with people just catching the heel. Okay, I got the heel, I let go and it's, it's going forward. Then if people are a little bit better, I'm gonna come here and now we're going to play a little, but I don't put pressure. And if he is experienced enough, I can put pressure. And with all of this, I can safely train those things without hurting anyone. And both can work, defensive and offensive. So the last mechanic is hip up. With hip up, I mean sideways towards the sky. So my hip bone here is not on the floor anymore. I can if I need to post this foot to achieve that. And then I'm gonna bring the, the hip forward. That's the last mechanic. And you see how much motion I get with that. So when we're here, we've done everything correctly. We get into the position, mechanic one, mechanic two, and then mechanic three, then that's gonna really, really break. Okay, and I need to do that in isolation, depending on my partner, because otherwise I just do a small motion and people need to tap right away. And keep in mind that this configuration is the weakest break of all of them. And I still get it. That's, as I said before, is the reason why we start here. So you can practice better without hurting your partner or just not being able to go into the mechanics well. Right? So, we're here, just like before. Pull the heel towards your nose and shrug your shoulders. Bring this knee down. Now look over your shoulder and get extension. And then it's hip up and in. And if I do everything really, really tight, I can get a good break here and I have this much more motion. And Giles is, is a little mobile. He's not just, you know, stiff and everything. So I actually can practice a little motion. But you see, even with him, I can go over that point a mile or a kilometer, depending on where you live. <laughs> All right, does anybody see it again? Great, go.
Do you see the reason why we do this in so many small steps? Yeah, does everyone understand that? Because it's not easy. It's uh, an arm lock where, like most joint locks, are way simpler than the heel because you have so much going on. You can oversimplify it, you can overcomplicate it, but it needs to be practiced in steps for you to be able to be effective with it. And it's always a good thing to know this step, these steps just because I can relatively safely tap people without wrecking them. Because I know, all right, I, I start with this, okay, he's not gonna tap, then I'm gonna go here. Oh, he's not gonna tap, then I'm gonna go here. You can do it in steps and not just do everything at the same time. That's how I do with people that I don't know. I can very safely tap beginners who have no idea what that is, just because with these kind of mechanics, his body or her body will tell them it's time to stop because it's gonna break. Your body is really responsive, I just told those guys. If your body tells you, oh, this is not good, something's gonna, gonna break, then something's gonna break if you don't stop. Right? So just be mindful of that. Your, your body is very responsive. And if you don't just rip it across and do the mechanics like we did, then your body will tell you, oh, this is not good. Some of you, as I said before, more in the knee, some of you more in the foot. Some of you feel both. That's a little dependent on anatomy and, and how mobile you are. But aside that, it's everything. Now, with cross ashi, with the inside heel, it's the same thing nothing changes. So if I have jaws here in the position that I told you at the beginning not to do, because I'm looking at the inside, then we're gonna do an inside heel. It's the same thing, I have a shotgun grip, I reach back, I pull up, I pinch, same position, nothing changed. Now I go into the position. If you don't know how to do it, it's just like a leg drag, maybe that helps if you know how a leg drag works. It's just instead of being here, you bring it across, then you put your foot on the inside, scoot a little closer, and just shallow triangle the legs. You have different options here. We don't need to go over that. Just be mindful that you want to have your knees pointing relatively in the same direction. I don't want to be here. Okay? So we're here. We're sitting on both buttocks. And now it's the same thing. We're here. That's our position. With the shotgun grip. And we're just going to do this. And we're here. Now the mechanics are the same. I pull this up, I push my knee in. Now, this position is way stronger than the one before, so you're more likely to get a tap sooner. The second mechanic is we're gonna come over our shoulder, and the third is leaving everything else out at first, hip up, and in. And if I do everything at the same time, like I, I, I can't even get to point three, right? That's why we do that separately. For safety reasons and because you can't practice it properly otherwise. But you see how much, how much more motion. Here's the tap. If you can't do that, you can put the leg on the wall and just take it with you if they don't tap. See the potential for the break there, right? It's the same thing. Nothing changed. If you understood that once, it will help you in any other heel hooking position. That's why it's such a valuable skill. Okay? So practice it on the inside. You can go step by step. You can start in the, in the position right away and go with the end. But if you have problems, just go one step back. It's no issue. Make everything perfect, perfect practice. So again, we were here. Wait, wait, wait. We were here before. Now, we scoot it in. Now we can bring the leg over and just get the legs to the inside. That's another way to just get there, right? If that feels awkward, start here, put the leg over, scoot a little, bring this one over. It's the same thing. You end up in the same position, but be mindful of your knee position. You want to be here. Shotgun grip on the elbow. Get the grip, get the bite. Now we can practice our, our mechanics. If I'm here, 
This is not correct. I need to be parallel with the sole of the foot, not with the shin bone. I want to be here and I adjust. That's all right. And from here, just pull the legs in. Don't forget that. Have a good position. Pull this up. Bring this knee in. That's the first mechanic. Second mechanic. Bring your shoulder back. And don't do this. This needs to come with this. Last one. Hip up and slowly enter. Now I do everything a little bit. Not too tight, so I can practice every movement a little bit. And see, even then, I didn't even get to the hip motion. Don't just push in. It's the most important and the strongest mechanic we have. But it makes everything easier if you do it correctly before in, much, in a much safer way. So you can just do that. And it's the same thing. And this is the last thing we're gonna do. I'm gonna show a couple of other variations. So you just see that they have every step of those things in common. Does anybody see that again? Great, try, go. <laughs> Did you see that that's almost the same thing? The position is different, but it's almost the same thing. So now you can apply that to almost any leg entanglement and any heel hook you do. Nothing changes. If you know the position and you know this, you can make it work. And we're here. Now we were doing all the things from Ashi. I can do the exact same thing from outside Ashi, just that I have a stronger break. But it's the same thing. Like if I get the heel, which by the way in outside Ashi it's hard. Right, you need to get it before you announce it, actually. but that's another story. Knees are facing in the same direction. We're here, I expose it. First mechanic, second mechanic, third mechanic, and I have my tap. It's the same thing, nothing changes. So I have my shotgun grip, I get the heel, I go forward, nothing changes. Okay, when I go inside Ashi, so I reap, it's a little bit different, and I can expose the heel easier, right? And I fall back. Nothing changed. We're still here. By the way, don't try to finish it here. Okay, this is not a strong finish for it. I need to be on the low side and almost belly down. But see, I have a really strong break here. Like, I didn't even need to do anything. It's just a small motion. It's the exact same thing. Now we're wearing cross ashi instead of straight. This is straight, this is cross. I know it can get, a, it can get confusing at the beginning, but if you get familiar with this, it's easy, okay? We did this already. Now, if I am 50-50, get the knee down. Nothing changes, okay? It's still the same break. I'm still here. I still crunch here. I still bring my shoulder back, my hip up, and I still have a brace. The same thing. Doesn't matter which entanglement you have. There are some exceptions, but there always are. This is a good way for you to get familiar with those things. Because then it doesn't matter how your legs are positioned for the break, for other things, of course they matter, don't get me wrong, but for the break, it's almost the same in every position. You have some additional stuff there, but when you finish on the low side, which we did all the time, this is the low side. This is neutral, this would be high side, and we have belly down and some backside position, so this, those are the orientations in relation to the floor. So. Where, where are we lying? It's the same position. The strong this break is typically on the low side and with some positions, belly down or backside. But the strong break is on the low side. If you have that in mind, try to get the break there. If I try to break Giles in another orientation, he can slip out, he sometimes can rotate out. I wanna be on the low side. But it doesn't matter which entanglement I have. If I get the heel and I position myself correctly, I can use the same mechanics with every one of those positions. And you really need to invest in that because it's just really effective. And you can only practice the defensive stuff if you understand offense to a certain degree, otherwise it won't work. Okay, so even if you don't want to go on the offensive side, you need to learn certain things to be able to defend it. Otherwise, it will be hard for you. And 
if you grapple Nogi, you know that people are attacking the legs and stuff. It's just, quite frankly, very effective. You need to learn it. You don't need to like it. Just like takedowns, right? Most people don't like takedowns, right? Because it's hard and ah. Uh, yeah, this is hard at the beginning. Like everything else, you're not good at. Familiarize yourself with it. It will pay dividends in the long run. And it's just super, super effective, even if you don't go there. Those are positions I used to sweep. I don't have to lag lock from there. Keep that in mind. It will help you tremendously. You sweep people with those positions. You can take them down off, off offensive guard pulls. You can pass the gap with them. Right? There's just so many possibilities with those positions. So even if you don't like to heal hook, just use them as positions to get better positions off of it. And that will help a lot. You can't get around this in the current meta. If you have any questions, you see me, grab me. As I said before, don't be shy. Unless Jaws is there, he's fighting a little, you know, Scott's. Right? Grab me when he's not around. <laughs> Thank you, Jaws. <Josh. laughs>